Capitulum Duode Tricesimum, Pericula Maris, Lecture 2, Versus Vicesimus, Usque Adversum Quadragesimum. Matus continues to ask about this Lord of Lydia's. Utrum homo andeus est. Is he a human being, or is he a god? Christus est dei filius, qui homo factus est. Of course, the story is rather complicated. Christ is the Son of God, who became a human being. So, factus est, serving as the passive, or excuse me, the perfect, um, for fieri, fieri. So this verb looks like it's related to facere, and it, in, it indeed is. We get the passive um, there, factum esse, facere, fecise, factum esse, but also fieri, factum esse, the deponent verb that means to happen, take place, to become, to be made also when it serves as the passive of facere. So Christ is the Son of God who became, perfect tense, a human being. In Olpido Bethlehem, natus est, in Judea, patria Judeorum, quae inter Syriam et Egyptum sita est. He was born, nascor, nasci, natum esse. He was born in the town of Bethlehem, Bethlehem here being in declinable, in Judea, apposition, the fatherland, the homeland of the Jews, which is located, situated, between Syria and Egypt. Eo venerunt reges, qui stellam eius viderant in Oriente, et in venerunt puerum cum Maria, matre eius, et adora verunt eum velut deum. Thither came kings, magi, these magi, eo here being a new word, an equivalent of iluc, to their thither, Venerunt perfect tense, thither came kings, that is, to Bethlehem, who had seen viderant, so they did the seeing, and then they did the coming. They had seen, who had seen his star in the east, in Oriente, et in venerunt puerum, perfect tense, and they found the child, with Mary, his mother, and they worshipped him just like a god, velut, tamquam, ut, sicut, synonyms. And they worshipped him just like a god. Postea, Christus ipse plane demonstravit se esse filium dei. Nam discipulos tocebat, quorum mania turba eum sequebatur, egro sanabat. Afterwards, Christ himself clearly demonstrated, demonstravit perfect tense, plane an adverb. Ipse, nominative, intensive with Christus. Afterwards, Christ himself clearly demonstrated, accusative with infinitive, because demonstrare here is working virtually as a mind or mouth verb, a verbum sentiendi, accadicendi, demonstrated that he was. Notice that essay is a present infinitive, but because infinitives and participles must always be translated relative to the time of the main verb, and the main verb is perfect tense, so we have to locate that essay idea in the past. 
back then, when he dem he demonstrated that at that same time, he was the Son of God. For he was teaching disciples or students, dochebon, imperfect tense, of whom a great crowd were following him, sequor sequi sequutum esse, imperfect tense, a deponent verb. He was healing the sick, again imperfect. So all of these imperfects let us know this was something that was ongoing, habitual in the past. This is what he did on a regular basis. Omnis medicus id facet. Every doctor does that. Remember that id will often be translated in English just as that, and it's just a reflection of what we do in English when we would say it versus that. Cui medicus verbi solis potes facere, Lydia replies, ut homines ceci videant, surdi audiant, multi loquantur, claudi ambulant. So this sentence gets us back to some of the new material from the previous chapter, from chapter 27. We finally see again another verbum studii et voluntatis. Here it's facere, a verb of endeavoring or striving, trying to bring something about, followed by ut plus the subjunctive. Now what will happen in this chapter is that we find out uh, about a certain change in usage when the main verb, the controlling verb that sets up the dependent clause is moved into a past tense. So here we still have a present tense example, potest facere, it's a present tense idea, just asking about what is the case in general, not about what Christ did in the past. Shortly though we'll see that what happens in constructions like that. So Lydia right now is saying, which doctor, qui medicus, is able to bring it about by his words alone, there be solis, that blind men see. Homines ceci videant, present subjunctive. Surdi audiant, that deaf men hear. Muti loquantur, that mute men speak, deponent verb, present subjunctive, that lame men or crippled men walk, just human beings in general. Potesne dominus tuus hic facere? Can your Lord do these things? Hake, neuter, accusative, plural. Profecto potest. In Judea, Jesus non solum faciebat, ut ceci viderent, surdi audirent, muti loquerentur, verum etiam, verbis efficiebat, ut mortui surgerent et ambularent. Certainly he can. In Judea, Jesus was not only making it the case that, now look at the tense of faciebat. No longer does it refer to the present time, but it refers to past time. Fachiebat. Back then, he was making it the case that, or not only was he making it the case that, ceci viderent. Notice that it is no longer videant, present subjunctive. Instead, we're now seeing for the first time the imperfect subjunctive. If you look at the end of the chapter, at the end of chapter 28, Orberg lays out for you there on page 229 and page 230 how uh, the imperfect subjunctive is formed in both the active and the passive voice. Now, 
there are other there are other uses of the imperfect subjunctive that we'll come to, but the very first thing we're seeing is what happens when the main verb that sets up the dependent clause goes over into the past tense. So we're still dealing with the same type of sentences that we had in chapter 27. These are still verba studii et voluntatis, like faciebat, or curabat, or imperabat. And now we get this tense switch. So the thought was, why do we use the, what, what's the justification for the imperfect subjunctive here? One way to think about it is that the imperfect is something that is not over and done in past time. So back then he was doing certain actions to cause these things to happen, but back then those actions were still future relative to his activity. That is, back then he comes in and he took the girl's hand in order to you know, raise her from the dead. Well, when he does that, taking the girl's hand or giving someone a command, the, the action, the result that he hopes to bring about is still not yet complete. It's still future relative to his action in the past. So that's one way of thinking about why we're using the imperfect subjunctive in these situations. It's not just because the main verb is imperfect, because we'll also see that this is the kind of construction that you get in the subjunctive when the main verb is um, perfect uh, or, or indeed um, pluperfect. If it was you know, some action that was expected to subse subsequently follow upon the activity of the main verb. In Judea, Jesus was not only making it the case that blind men see, that deaf men hear, and that mute men speak, or we could say he was, not only was he making it the case that they would do this, a moment after, you know, he had done whatever his healing, you know, uh, craft involved, whatever miracle he was effecting, but also he was making it the case, a bot by means of his words, ablative, that dead men rise, or that they would rise, and that dead men would walk. Ex universa judea homines egri, qui famam de factis eius mirabilibus audiverant, ad eum conveniebant. Postremo tamen, Jesus Christus, ab improbis hominibus necatus est. Out of all Judea, sick men who had heard, audiverant, pluperfect, who had heard the, the fame, the rumor, the report about his marvelous deeds, were coming to him, ad eum conveniebant, imperfect. Finally, however, postre motamen, Jesus Christus, Jesus Christ, was killed, necatus est, perfect tense, passive voice, by wicked men, ab improbis hominibus.